How's it going, everyone? Welcome back to Race Reviews 2024, the first NASCAR exhibition race of the season. And uh, actually a lot to talk about because this race was never supposed to be ran. Uh, you guys are probably watching this on the Sunday. This video is going up Sunday morning, but um, I'm recording this as of Saturday night. So uh, this race was not supposed to be run tonight. This race was supposed to be run tomorrow, but weather forecast for the Los Angeles area from now until, uh, what was it, Thursday? was looking bad so nascar makes something that i think they've never done before um and something i've never seen them do before is where they literally move the event 24 hours earlier this was the, like the biggest storyline obviously because the race was getting not supposed to happen today uh so it was really interesting to see but um they didn't really have a choice and my my only complaint about this though is that you could have made this decision quicker i think nascar kind of screwed themselves out of uh you know business wise they kind of screwed themselves out a little bit i think you could have made the decision in the middle of the week you you saw the forecast the forecast wasn't going to change that much um they could have made it the middle of the week however you want to give nascar a lot of uh, uh, props as well because uh basically the event was free it was general admission free you could sit anywhere you want you don't gotta pay to get in and the people that did pay for tickets uh are going to get refunded so i think nascar said that they're going to contact everyone they're going to refund them so um that is the good news and i think parking as well is going to be refunded as well so everything if you bought parking if you bought a ticket if you did all that plan and go on sunday night uh you were refunded and even if you, for example, live in the Los Angeles area and you were prepared, you saw the news and you had nothing to do and you were going to go on Sunday, but ended up going tonight anyways, um, well, then you get your money back and you get a free NASCAR event. So uh, it works out for the fans because they do get their money back and some of them, they get the event and their money back. So when I was looking back, when I sat back and looked back at it, I was like, all right, that's actually good for the fans. It's definitely not good for NASCAR. Um, because they they lost. I mean, guys, you, you they lost a lot of money tonight. Let's just put it that way. Uh, and most likely, it is going to be the last time you see the Coliseum race on the schedule. Um, it just doesn't do it. Uh, listen, I don't think it's anything to do with the LA market. I don't think that's the case. It's just that honestly, the track is too small. I mean, it was a good idea to try it out, but the track's too small. Uh, like genuinely, it is not uh, not productive for to for giving quality nascar racing it is productive for like bumper cars like we can like you know do some bumper cart racing and move people out of the way and stuff like that yes but it's genuinely i don't even think you go above 80 miles per hour at any time on that track like it's genuinely uh really slow and i don't think it's what the la market needs uh i think you do need a little bit more high speed and and to be fair auto club is turning into that even though that's not the la market uh, auto club will be a high speed kind of short track because the corners are going to be high banked and the straightaway is going to be long so it'll be a high speed short track but for an exhibition race this is probably the last time you're going to see it at the coliseum this might be the last time you see it overall i do think this um budweiser shootout that i still call it i know it's still called the, the, the it's called the bush light clash now but you know the gatorade shootout the budweiser shootout whatever it was called uh, over the years it probably has run its course i would prefer to see it blended into speed weeks i think it's actually a good indicator or a good lead up to the daytona 500 so i would like for it to return to daytona maybe not the week before the 500 but maybe during the week i don't know if you can mix something in with the duels uh or something like that if not i would just get rid of this altogether. i don't think it's really necessary it doesn't seem like a lot of people are interested in it um and yeah i mean it's it's not like an all-star race with a million dollars on the line you know it's nothing like that it's not like the whole glamour of winning the pole and then you know making sure you get locked into the Budweiser shootout because you won the poll in the previous season. Again, no one really cares about that. So it just feels like it, it, the event has run its course. I would not mind if it didn't come back. And if that's the case, then that's the case. But give big credit to NASCAR for what they did tonight uh, in terms of getting the race run, in terms of not screwing the fans. They could have easily said, like, oh, if you bought a ticket, you know, we will give you credit for another event or something like that. No, no, like everyone's getting refunded and people still got to see the event they're just taking the l when it comes to the to the money like they're just going to take that hit and it is what it is so uh that was like the biggest storyline of the race and uh massive props to nascar because i think it was a really good decision now the teams and everyone get to go back um because they do got to travel across the country to daytona uh they get to go travel and do that um before uh daytona week in well what is it 
the not next weekend but two weeks from now so uh they get to do that um so i think it's a good call all, all around the race itself eh, you know it's it, it I, I don't want to like put any complaints on it it's just like the guy the, the track's too small it's just that's it it's not it's not let's throw in 900 horsepower in the race <laughs> no the track is too small like the track is genuinely just too small it's way too small for these beefy stock cars like these big stock cars it is not it's not it's not worth it uh it's literal bumper carts there's no way you can there's literally no way you can pass clean in order to pass you have to just run someone up the track uh whether it's hitting them or door slamming them and using you know eight wheels is better than four as mike joy loves to say and it's kind of acceptable this race is literally like i racing official lobbies it's just it is what it is you can't do anything about it it's chaos and uh, it's entertainment. That's all it is. But even I feel like the drivers like know like, all right, this is kind of dumb. You guys are kind of putting, you, you know, NASCAR, you're putting me in a situation where I have to hit this guy. I have to do this. I don't have a choice. Um, we saw it all night long, whether it was Ty Gibbs running up into Joy Logano and Joy Logano being mad or whether it was further back in the field and the accordion effect of just bumper cars. And again, the next gen car also is, is just durable. Like the bumpers are square. You hit someone super hard and it doesn't matter their car doesn't go sideways uh, unless you hit them in a certain way for example like i think larson did a ty gibbs um it, it's just kind of it's just too small it's kind of man i don't think it works for what you want to represent nascar to be you do want short track racing but it's almost like too condensed and you can't really get the proper racing out of it if it makes sense um and so it's not a good indication this new short track package which is not a lot there's there's not really a difference to the horsepower. There are some underbody arrow things that I think the teams are going to catch up on anyways and reintroduce the underbody downforce anyways. So I don't think it's going to make much of a difference at all over the course of the season. Um, and again, NASCAR could add horsepower for the short tracks. I don't see what the harm in it is. The teams, a lot of the teams, the drivers have said there's no harm in it. There's no... Uh, expense issue like with the money it, that's not a problem again all these engines guys if you don't know have tapered spacers on them you can take the tapered spacer off you can run it at its natural 900 horsepower if you want for tr short tracks only and just there's no harm in it the, let's just see what happens if it doesn't work you can tell everyone to shut up again i don't think just that is going to fix the short track package I think you'd, it's a multitude of things that maybe were overlooked when the next gen car was designed as to how I think the next gen car works better intermediates, but it doesn't work as well at short tracks. It's kind of weird. Uh, and we just got to keep working on that. But this race is not an indication of that because the track is just simply essentially too small. The winner of the race is Denny Hamlin. He qualified on pole. He fell off. I think Ty Gibbs, we could argue, was the fastest car in the race and we will talk about him. But uh, Denny Ham Hamlin ends up winning the race and we're just going to go to the race results because again, I don't want to talk but the incidents in the race because again it's just all too chaotic it's too i hit you you hit me wreck wreck you know body slam up the track guys restarting second will fall back to fifth in one lap because of the inside line going three wide it's it's kind of just insane it's like a it's like the daytona or it's like the talladega of short tracks it's like a complete lottery in terms of what happens um so denny Hamlin, kyle bush ryan blaney logano larson bowman briscoe keselowski truex and byron are the top 10 uh, and then uh, in Priest, Wallace, John Hunter Nemechek, Reddick, Chastain, Stenhouse, LaJoy, Ty Gibbs, McDowell, Gregson, Haley, Elliott, and Gillen round out everybody else. Um, and Ty Gibbs was the disappointing one here because he was extremely fast. And that's just one I do want to talk about. I've been saying this for a long time. I think Ty Gibbs is going to be an extremely good race car. I'm going even as far as dominant. I think he can be a dominant driver. I think he could... I don't want to put championships on him because I think winning a championship in NASCAR nowadays is too random. It just is. I'm not going to classify your talent level or like how good you are based off championships. I just don't think it's fair to anyone in terms of the drivers because it is too random. You are asking for too much for a driver to, to win, have a 25% chance in a single race where the cars are all very similar. It's there's too many random things that happen. So from here on out, like I genuinely don't think you can use championships as a metric to tell you like, hey, how good is this driver compared to this driver? I don't think you do that. That's NASCAR's fault. That's not the driver's fault. That's not the fan's fault. That's NASCAR's fault for devaluing the championship. I'm going to keep saying that as long as we have this stupid one race 
uh, championship thing. It is devalued the championships. I don't think it's going to matter. So I don't I don't know if Ty Gibbs is going to win multiple championships. I think he will win a championship. But as you can see, ever since this format was introduced, it is extremely difficult to win multiple championships. It just doesn't happen. Most of the time, you win one championship and then that's it. Go look back at, at the majority of the championships and you will see that that usually is the case. Uh, it is very difficult to put together a string within a five-year period of winning multiple championships. Ty Gibbs can win multiple races. I'm talking 40, 50, 60. I think he can get maybe even more. Um, he could get to the 70 or 80 range, maybe. Uh, that's probably pushing it. But I think he's that level. So, like, I think he's a Kyle Busch level. I think he's a Denny Hamlin, two of his teammates, obviously, before uh, Gibbs. Uh, technically not Kyle Busch, but two Gibbs drivers. Uh, Truex Jr., um, who else? Probably, I'm trying to think of other drivers. Rusty Wallace, Mark Martin. You know, that area, not the area of Gordon and, uh, you know, uh, Yarbrough and Johnson and Earnhardt and all those guys, not there, not the, you know, 80 and above level, but 40 to 50 to 60, somewhere in that area, I do believe I would be disappointed if Ty Gibbs doesn't get there. I think his career is going to lead to that point, and then if it can go higher, it can go higher, because I think he's so incredibly talented. I, I, I know a lot of people don't like him because he's not that relatable. He's not that... He's just a kid, really. He's not really a man yet, but um, he is uh, extremely, extremely talented behind the wheel, and I think he will take that leap this year. I believe this year he will be one of the best drivers at Gibbs, uh, and I think Gibbs is going to be really strong. I think they have three drivers that are extremely strong, in Bell, uh, Hamlin, and um, Ty Gibbs. Uh, you know, Truex is coming towards the end of his career, so I don't want to put any, you know, expectations on him. But I think Hamlin, Bell, and and Gibbs are going to be really strong. I, I feel like they that that trio might even beat out the Hendrick trio of uh, Elliott, uh, Byron, and Larson. Mainly because Elliott has not shown anything since coming back from his injury he kind of needs to show me again that he can actually you know compete at the top level uh before i kind of do anything there but um and then to the winner denny hamlin i will admit guys now this is the, the title of the video is not clickbait i was thinking about this i'm gonna make a way too early championship prediction i just had to pick a random one again like i said championships are devalued too hard to win a championship once we get to the final race you never know as long as you make the final four and you have a chance it is what it is I think Denny Hamlin makes the final four this year. I think he does make the final four. Um, and I'm going to pick him in my little one out of four dart that he's going to win the championship this year. I feel like this is finally the year that Denny Hamlin's going to get it done. I don't know why. I just have that feeling. That's just my opinion. I think the Toyotas are going to be fast. I feel like Hamlin is going to have speed. Oddly enough, maybe his teammates might be his strongest competitors, one of Gibbs or Bell. I don't think Gibbs is strong enough to compete for a championship, but I think Bell could I definitely think Christopher Bell uh, could. So uh, we'll see how it goes there. Um, but Hamlin, yeah, I think I think this is the year he wins the championship. That's my way too early prediction. Obviously, once you get through the races and you see who's fast, who's not, what team brings the speed every week, then you could adjust the championship predictions a little bit. But Hamlin's definitely my pick. I think he finally gets it done. Uh, other than that, there are some tempers flaring between Ty Gibbs and Joey Logano, between, I think, Reddick and... Uh, Ross Chastain, no surprise, Ross Chastain tempers flaring, but uh, like I said, entertainment value. I don't even think the driver is going to mind that much. It seemed like Logano and Kibbs were kind of going at each other, but you don't have a choice. You have to run up, the, you, you have to run the other driver up the track. You have to hit them in the rear end. You have to do these things. NASCAR doesn't give you a choice when it is this, you know, tight. Uh, in this small of a racetrack so uh, just uh, just entertainment next weekend there is no race the daytona 500 is up next the biggest race of the year it's gonna be chaotic we will see who wins it and uh hopefully uh, i have an idea i have an idea i have a pick guys i have a pick i'm not gonna reveal who the pick is i will admit it is a chevy which is already making me doubt because i think ford is just so extremely strong at the plate tracks and i feel like if i don't go with ford i'm an idiot but i do think i'm gonna go with the chevy and i think this driver will win his first daytona 500 i'm not gonna admit who it is you guys can narrow it down from there it's a chevy and they've never won the 500 before so there are your names you guys can pick uh we'll see how it goes but uh that is my pick and i will say that in a few weeks time hopefully you guys enjoyed the video comment down below what you thought of the exhibition race I will see you guys tomorrow. Enjoy your weekend. Enjoy the rest of 
uh, your day, and I will see you guys tomorrow. Follow me on Twitter, Instagram, already. Subscribe if you're new. Hit the notification bell for any updates on when we go live on live streams or videos. And I will see you tomorrow. And for race reviews, see you in two weeks for the Daytona 500, where I do believe a Chevy is going to win. I'm already regretting it. I want to change my pick to a Ford, but I'm going to stick with it. I already, I picked it. I can't change. Take care of yourselves. Peace out.